the gentleman is Pastor Darrell Carnes. Give him a hand. All right. We on? We're going to start. Most of you, most of all of you have heard about My360. I want to show you a short video and I'm going to have Grace do that. And I'm going to talk a little bit about it and then we're going to preach the gospel, get into the word. I don't want to spend too much time on My360, but I do want to testify about it because you guys are really a major part of it. And I just want to say thanks for that. Grace, if we can show this short video. My360 Project has developed a shoe to change and save the lives of children around the world. And in the process, they realized in order to help children, they would have to disrupt the ordinary in order to discover the extraordinary. My360 Project develops shoes because in the developing world, children must have shoes to access education. And without shoes, a child's lifespan and opportunities are drastically limited. Additionally, walking is the primary mode of transportation, and when children don't have the proper fitting shoes, their feet are prone to disease and infections that can impact their overall health. My360 Project partnered with Mike Freeton, a former senior innovator at Nike, to design a shoe that would protect children's feet and transform the economy of communities around the world. As a world-renowned shoe expert, Mike's passion has been to develop shoes that enable feet to develop naturally. Well, Daryl came into my shop. Um, we sort of brainstormed and I talked him into sort of some of my ideas, <laughs> which was, I'd rather have them making it locally to distribute to the, so you empower the communities that you're trying to give the shoes to. And to me, that, that was a better model. Where, the, you know, working with children is just like an amazing gift and that you can just see their heart open up, you know. It's a completely different experience. Um, uh, it's, there's much a sort of deeper connection there. Um, and at this point in my life, this is something a lot more fulfilling. You know, I spent many years working with athletes and uh, it's great to be able to put a shoe on, the, on, on their feet and see them go out and do amazing things. Um, but this is more, 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 a lot more than that. My360 Project desires to disrupt the cycle of poverty by creating a sustainable solution of employment for those who have been victims of trafficking or are unemployable due to a lack of opportunities or education. Our shoes are handmade by local artisans. So rather than negatively impacting a community's economy, the My360 Project creates additional economic opportunity. There is power in the personal touch of washing a child's feet before giving them a shoe. The band Unspoken recently traveled with My360 Project to deliver shoes, and it had a huge impact for the members of the band. Here's Chad talking about their trip. Being here with My360 Project has just been super neat because it's given us an opportunity to um, get our kids involved in the things that um, are important and close to God's heart. You know, an eight-year-old girl put shoes and washed the feet of an eight-year-old uh, migrant worker, you know, from El Salvador, and the smiles and the connection and, um, and really living out that faith. And I think the washing of the feet is something that's so important. By sponsoring shoes to children in need, My360 Project is making an impact across the globe. The shoes are being made often by those individuals the society has left behind. And by giving these individuals income with purpose and dignity, it's time to disrupt, discover, and deliver. Some of you have watched that before, and it we just, uh, that's actually the voiceover is David Pierce from Caleb, and so it was kind of a cool thing with Caleb helping us out and getting us some exposure, but I wanted you to see that we, this last year, you guys were like one of the first churches to give us socks, because we begin to realize as we're going into some of these places in October, November, their feet, it's just cold, and so we were able to, in fact, I remember talking to Pastor Jeff, and they said, what could you do? And I said, man, could you? Get us some socks, and so last time we took a tub home, and uh, so I was actually going to fly here from Phoenix and, and speak today. And something in my mind, I go, you know, I just—it's a four-hour drive. It's a great drive. You got a good podcast to listen. I'm going to drive because something tells me there's more than a tub of socks there. And so, and I brought my smallest car. But anyways, we're glad. This is amazing. Can you give you guys a hand? This is amazing. <laughs> creative. We're going to probably need to borrow some rope from some people. I'm going to look like the Beverly Hillbillies go ahead and back to Phoenix, but a lot of socks is going to go on a lot of kids. These will actually be down in Mexico. We'll ship some of these. I'm doing a project in El Salvador and uh, Honduras. 
and then a little bit to Africa. Uganda doesn't need socks quite as much because of the heat, but uh, we're going we're gonna to make good use of these socks. So thanks to all of you for helping us with that. When I was here last time, we were talking about trips, and I kind of probably fell through with that. We just had a busy year this last year, but I have a date up here, and I really want a few of you guys, love all of you to go, to go with me down to Vicente Guerrero and Baja maybe in April. There's dates, there's cost. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make it so easy for you that you can't say no, okay? Um, but what's really cool here, if you don't have the money to go, Pastor Jeff said he'll write the check. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> what's fun about the shoes, and let me just hit this, and then we're going to get into the word, but you, the shoes are a fundraiser, and so people sponsor them for $35, and up to 10 of that goes to help pay your way to deliver the shoe. And so it's a great fundraiser. We have fundraisers going right now. We have teens um, that are going in different places, and we had a young teenage girl, uh, or actually she's in her early 20s, well, you know she's broke. She was just getting out of college, uh, or at least her parents were broke. And she wanted to go on a trip in December, and the cost of the trip was 700 and that pays. That's all your food. That's everything. A lot of fun. You get to hang out with me. You know, that's going to be great. Um, maybe not. Uh, and she was able to get 72 pairs of shoes sponsored by people who didn't even know her. And it paid for her way to go, the ground fees. And it's, it's just, it's another opportunity. Now, someone can write the check. Someone can give you 100 bucks and 50 bucks to go. And you want to wash a car or sell banana splits. That's great. But the shoe gives you an opportunity to witness to somebody and to share with someone. And one of the things I love about the shoe for evangelism is a church in Flagstaff. They've done this now twice. They had, all, they had a lot of shoe sponsored for their team. They're going for their third trip in July. When they come back, they had a Wednesday night service, and I don't know if you do Wednesday nights, but it could be a Sunday. But everyone who sponsored shoes, they invited them to church, and they filled the church up full of all kind of people, and they got to hear the testimonies. And there was coaches that were there <coughs> that had sponsored athletes, and these are people who normally wouldn't give you thirty-five dollars to go on a mission trip because they think we're going on a vacation, and we kind of are. At least a couple hours of it. I'm going to have fun with you. Other time, you're going to be working. You're going to be praying, oh, God, get me back to Vegas. Uh, but we're going to go serve. And so I really I want to take the excuses away. If you're interested in going talk with me after church, I'll give you a couple of dates. But there's one in April I'd love you to go on, and we'll have a great time down in Vicente. You'll just either drive down to San Diego, meet us there, or we'll figure out how to – if it's just this church going, maybe we figure out how to bust you out of here. But every, all the prices are based out of San Diego. And you'll have a great place to stay. People always ask about safety. My Lord, you live in Vegas. You can go anywhere in the world. <laughs> I mean, I was in a town the other day, and they were saying, Mexico is so unsafe. And I go, we had 72 homicides in this this little town last year. I mean, I, I come on now. you know. So we'll, we'll talk about that in my sermon today. Because one of the things about missions that, that so many people you know, struggle with is fear. And so I want, I want to talk about that. But so thank you. And, and the video that we just showed, what I'd love you to do, here's how you can help us, is text SHOES to 24365. And that video's there. Download it and put it out on your Facebook for us. And if you haven't liked us on Facebook, like us, My360 Project on Facebook. That's how you can help us. If you want to become a monthly shoe hero, that's wonderful. All the information's there. But really, it's exposure for us. And God is really... Just since I was here last time, it's been amazing to see what the Lord is doing. And thanks to Pastor Jeff. Well, we had a great time at the hockey game last night. I mean, even if he wasn't a good host, he had me at hockey. Um, and he was a wonderful host, him and his wonderful wife, Peggy, and their wonderful daughter, Grace. We love her. She interviewed me this last year. I, I'm the road pastor for Unspoken, and, and uh, it was really a lot of fun. And she's just a, for her age. I mean, she's 21, 23, what is she? Uh, her age, being a freshman in high school, she's she's got it together. And I was just thinking, man, what would be my life? My life would be so, if I could have had it together my freshman year of high school. We don't even want to talk about it. Um, but thanks to this family. And also, one real quick, I have a great friend here, Pastor Pat. He's actually the executive director, Pastor Pat Wade back there. He's the executive director. I'm going to get this wrong, but it's Casa de Luz. <laughs> It's a, a, a program downtown, and they do a great job. In fact, well, somebody connected this church, or at least friendships here. I think it's, is it Robert? Ron. Ron. Ron works with him. And Pastor Pat's been a good friend of mine. He's been on our trip, what, two or three times? 
Could you say that a My360 trip is a life-changing trip, Pastor Pat? Both my boys. He's taken both of his sons. He actually has led a trip for us. So let's talk after church. But let me get into the Word today. I love making up words. I pastored for 25 years. God stranded me in Alaska for most of my life, and now I live in Phoenix. So I tell people when I come to preach for them, I can preach you a sermon hotter than hell or colder than hell. What do you want today? We'll just go middle of the road, okay? But most of my life I lived in Alaska and did 43 years up there. My parents were missionaries, and I enjoyed pastoring for many years, almost 25 years, and then really was being drawn to the mission field. Even though my parents were missionaries to Alaska, I would say, Lord, please send me lower down in the equator. Anything equator south is where I'd like to go. And God opened some interesting doors for me. But in pastoring, I always like to make up words. I mean, everyone else gets to do it. Then when I would make them up, they'd get mad at me. But I have made up a word, and I don't know, maybe I haven't made this up, but it's called the doology. Ever since I've been sharing and challenging people to become missionaries, not just foreign but local, I want to talk to you about becoming a goologist. All right? So it's a word, and it's on the screen. We're going to trademark this and sell T-shirts. Come on. I want to talk to you about goology because here in my history of ministry, being a fourth-generation missions kid, the greatest thing that you can do is to go. And I want to share that with you today, take you to the Scripture. If you would just bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to be here at North Point Community and just wonderful people. Or thank you for Pastor Jeff coming into my life and just really encouraging me and, and really at a time of just uh, really interesting times in my life as we're developing this, just his word of encouragement and sponsoring shoes and his family getting behind this and this church just coming behind it. it, it it's just been such an honor. And Lord, I ask you today to lead and guide the words that I feel like you've given me to share to challenge this church, and as they see your will done here, God, just leading guide us today in your name. Amen. Amen. So the Great Commission in the Bible, of course, is given to us in, in Matthew 28, 19, and I, I want to share with you, I was, I was working on some messages in, in when I get to go to churches and speak, and I'm excited that you had me back. It's always a surprise. I mean, it was just an interview last time, but I'm back a second time. That's like, hey, I like this. It doesn't always happen. Um, but I, I wanted to come up with something to challenge people, and I, and I call it uh, goology, but it's I want to talk about the go, the going, and the gone of missions. Now, the word foreign missionary or missionary is not necessarily a biblical term in the sense of, uh, of, of becoming a missionary in a sense, other than you know we know that our first missionary in the New Testament was the lady at the well. Great story uh, of Jesus going through Samaria. Um, but the word missions, how many of you do, do you remember, uh, I don't know, your history of church or how, how you've done church over the years, but in Sunday school, we used to have missionaries come, and they would be from Africa. Anybody, like when you were in church, I mean, you, you remember missionaries coming to your church, and they would have a slideshow? I don't know if you guys did that, but in our church, we'd have missionaries come through, and they'd have slideshows, and usually the slide would burn, you know, <laughs> so it always, well, that was, you know, uh, but I, I just remember when missionaries would come, it would just so impact me. And then my father being a missionary, and I think I shared this last time I was here, my first mission trip, I was seven years old. And since I was here last, I finally, I've hit my 101st country in the world of, of traveling. And it was Nicaragua, <coughs> actually just in August, and had a wonderful time. But uh, just missionaries would come, and it would just, in, it would touch my heart. And my dad would always tell me, if I travel, my brain would grow. And it's amazing what happens when you get to travel. But as I share the message today, I'm not challenging you to go with me to Mexico or, or El Salvador or Uganda. My biggest thing is whatever God has called you to do, that's my challenge for you today, is to go. The scriptures tell us in, in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he says this, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you, and be sure of this, 
I am with you always, even to the end of age. So we find here the word go. The word go, two letters, most expensive word of the Bible. Find me a more expensive word in the Bible because it's one of those things that when you decide to go, it's going to cost you everything. Three Saturdays ago, I was in Sacramento, California, helping do a funeral or attending a funeral of a wonderful mission friend of mine who passed away on the mission field January 1st. And 52 years old, one of my best of friends, incredible missionary, but he gave everything. And in fact, if he hadn't been on the mission field, probably wouldn't have passed away. But you know what? He was living out his passion. I say that not to discourage you, but the point is when we live for God, when we accept Christ into our heart, it is not a, 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 a patsy thing. It, it, it's not just a patty cake time. When we say, Christ, I'm yours. Prepare yourself for an adventure. In fact, I always say, when you come to Christ, and this is not a great sales thing, when you come to Christ, you get a kick me sign right there on your back. <laughs> and, and, and if that hasn't happened to you, hang out with me a little bit longer because I'm going to put it on there myself. <laughs> because it's not an easy thing when you're standing up for Christ. So he tells us to go. Where are we to go? Acts 1.8 says, he says, tell, he tells his witnesses to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Judea Samaria, the utmost parts of the earth. It, it's a here, near, far. It's a local to global. It's your city. It's your state. It's your country. It's your world. It's your family. It's your friends. It's your community. It's beyond. So the go, as we talk about it, you have to decide where God's leading you. But it is in some way, it's different from just setting where you're at. In some way, it could be tomorrow on your job, all of a sudden you walk in with a new attitude. Some of you might have left the job on Friday going, feel foul, foul, feel, feel, I don't know. I mean, some of you are probably all wonderful Christians and never think that way. But you know how it is? Sometimes you have a bad attitude. Go with me to Walmart. I really have to pray <laughs> when I'm there. And I love Walmart. I'm a stockholder. But the point is, is if I want to get closer to Jesus, sometimes I just go shopping. <laughs> because it's like, how many cashiers are they supposed to have here? You know, it's, and, but here's what I find myself doing. As I'm in the longest of lines, I just start witnessing and start talking and having fun with people. It's amazing who you can meet. But your go is going to be different than the other person sitting next to you. But the point is, is that God has a go. Here's what's interesting. Does God really need us? Eh, not really. But he loves when we participate with where he is at work. A famous writer named Henry Blackaby wrote a great book called Experiencing God. He says, if you want to do his will, look where he's moving and go there. Find out what God is up to and become a part of that in your life. Interesting enough, two-thirds of God is go. Think about that for a moment. G-O-D. Two-thirds of his name is go. There's got to be some kind of a message in there. After you've really established the go in your life, then there's the going. The going is what's disruptive. Because I don't know about you, my wife and I, and she, if she was here today, and she'll probably listen to this. I always won't get in trouble. Um, I have a lot of go in me. I have a lot of, hey, let's do, you know, a lot of planning. And, and especially with the honeydew list. Like, I have been on a go of getting my garage clean for a couple of months now. And it hadn't happened yet, but I'm planning. I mean, it's a go. I mean, are we doing that today, huh? It's a go, you know. Babe, I, you know, it's this toe right here. You know, I mean, it's amazing what you can have in your life that will uh, begin to be so disruptive that you love to talk about the go, but it's going that becomes the issue. It's easy to sit here and say, man, I want to go on a trip, or hey, I want to go uh, volunteer in the Sunday school, or I want to go down to the food bank, or I want to go meet Pastor Pat and help him at Casa. But then the going is really where the issue begins. It's disruptive. It's something that requires a lot of prayer and focus. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understandings, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Here's the significant side of coming to Christ and being a Christian and allowing the gospel to just infuriate who you are. He will give you the peace that you need. Now, I have been doing missions 
most of my life and i love when people come and they have a lot of you know oh my goodness pastor you're like i'd love to go to africa with you but man i'm afraid of flying 35 hours you know i'd love to go down and to the food bank but you know all of these different things that this one lady she came to me years ago we were doing a trip to the la dream center and and so because we do all kind we do local missions we do you know state country out of the country and she, I, she said, Pastor D, she goes, I really want to go. But she said, there's this one fear that I have. And I said, what is that? She goes, I'm going to get mugged when I'm in L.A. I just have this ongoing fear. And I'm going, all right. I said, that's a lot of paperwork for us if that happens. Um, I haven't had it happen, but it's possible. I mean, it's L.A. And um, she just had this fear. I said, well, let's pray about it and see what you think. So finally she comes and she says, all right, I'm going to go. But she said, I just, oh, I can't tell you about the fear of that. So we, you know, we had our team meetings, and we're praying about anti, you know, we're trying to show her how to not get mugged. We're having her watch movies and different things. And um, the day of the trip, I'm in my office. I'm not going on the trip because I'm afraid to get mugged in L.A. Uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, if you guys read about me getting mugged soon, you know I've caused it today. Uh, but I wasn't going on this particular trip. I was in my office, and I was going to go meet the team at the airport and, you know, do the prayer and the high fives and everything. And so 